There is this archetype, they're just butt naked hanging around. They have shoes on, but nothing else. Hi everyone, welcome to another reaction video. Today we're gonna react to some people that are living in Berlin, uh, how they see Berlin. Let's dive into it, but first of all we need to check out the comment of the last videos. There have been some interesting comments. Generally I'm pretty thankful for all the comments. Uh, thank you for the discussion and, and all, this, uh, all this stuff. So we really getting to talk with each other and I like it a lot. So let's dive into the comments that I wanted to spotlight. From Max Cooper is writing, what's your favorite club party in Berlin? I think it's no wonder that my favorite club in Berlin is obviously Berghain. I'm sorry to be it, I'm a sucker for Berghain. I admit it. Sorry. Parties, I don't really have like favorite parties, but what I can recommend you is this party so when you see it ah yeah there it is so if you see it you can come here Prurvu is the name it's a dance floor by Das Techno team so of course I'm recommending it but yeah I'm not a huge fan of special parties I'm more a fan of clubs if I feel like the club has a community this is this is more my kind of my vibe than a party line that is like moving around that's my personal opinion. Yeah, so <laughs> be tuned for the Prurvu Club or the Techno Team Club. Uh, write it down in the comments if you're interested in uh, something like that. But yeah, so this I can recommend and obviously Bergheim. So yeah, and another person writes anonymously known rave girl 92945. Basically, she's writing. I guess it's a she if it's a girl. So uh, that social media messed up all the all the rave culture and here and whatnot. I do not agree at this point because um, I think that social media, what it did and what it does, what particularly we are doing is like a good archive for the whole techno culture, electronic music culture. It's a, like an archive, but a modern archive. You know, there's documentaries, there's vintage documentaries that we are also watching and stuff, but we're like more... Uh, POV style kind of documentation of what's happening now, let's see, in the rave culture. That's how I see it. So, of course, there is a lot of cloud chasers on social media that, uh, that just want to have some clicks and they're getting the clicks. They're just like wearing harnesses and here and whatnot. And yeah, I don't see the, them as destroying the scenes or whatever. They're just like they are moving parallel to the scene or like the culture and they're just there if tomorrow will be hip-hop again mainstream so they will do like some hip-hop dances and dancing to hip-hop if it's gabber they do it gabber if it's hard style or every genre imagine every word to everything you want they will do that so i don't see them as necessarily as harmful for the culture so that's at this point let's dive into our reaction video into our video that we're gonna react to it's sex drugs and berlin club culture oh my god such a title genius oh genius okay let's dive in they look like uh, they're from berlin uh, <laughs> let's go the, the amount of hard drugs that people can take it here and i come from mexico there's people <laughs> fucking in the clubs and there's people that go naked you know and there's areas specifically it, it was wild i mean people I mean, it's so funny. There is this archetype. Also, you can see it on Christopher Street Days, obviously, or Rave the Planet, I think, as well. And Berghain, obviously. These guys, they are just going butt naked into the club. They're just butt naked hanging around. They have shoes on, but nothing else. And my question is, where is your money? Where is your phone? Okay, phone. Okay, let's say they're so, like, uh, so concentrated, focused in the moment. Cool. No phone. But where, where's the money or, I don't know, do you have like a second person that is like uh, wearing your money and stuff? Because they don't even have a, like a fanny pack or like any bag. So it's pretty interesting at this point. Yeah, drugs is uh, just like the old reliable, yes, people consume drugs here. Yes, people consume a lot of drugs here. And yes, uh, at this point I just want to say I'm reacting as a local also. And I assume in this video there are not much locals, but let, let it be just an assumption. So this is like a really perspective of people that came here and trying to socialize, socialize through the club culture, obviously. 
So that's like a one-sided view, I think, from the people that are featured here. But obviously, if it would be different, it wouldn't be an interesting video to react to. So yeah, just saying at this point. People having sex on the dance floor in the corners, yep. drugs <laughs> everywhere. The most asked question I would say is, how do I dress to get in? Like, sorry for the language, but very ass grabby. Because it's crazy to get in. I mean, even... And do you have any particular recommendations? We were in, in almost all, the... all, all of them. Disclaimer, this video serves a documentary purpose and does not condone drug use. If you are struggling with drug abuse or alcoholism, please seek support from your local healthcare provider. Yes, thank you for the disclaimer, but I think you are still uh, doing it. And I obviously doing it as well by uh, featuring these videos. But maybe we can have an educational approach to it and... Uh, show people that you don't have to be this way to be cool or whatever because most of the people that are like getting to drugs are like um you know cloud chasers i don't know they're trying to fit in and yes you kind of fit in if you do it but you have to realize by yourself or on your own that you can also fit in without it it takes more from you basically but in the end it will benefit your health tremendously <laughs> How would you describe the clubbing culture here in Berlin? Am I allowed to answer first this? Okay, yes. The truth for us is like we are not like very clubbing people, but we visit the big ones and we have like our first club here was Berheim. You know, like normally the people take time to go inside. For us, it was very easy. Go Sunday at midday. At that moment, we say like very easy. Also, classic if you're like a Berlin expat. You have to brag about it that you got in from the first time. That's really important. So if you come here, that's what you need to do. First time I got into Berkheim, it was like this. Easy. Me as well. The first time I got there, I was like, I'm here. And they say, please, get in. Maki, you have to be here. Get in. I never get a no. So in my case, it was like, whoa, this is so cool that you are so free to do whatever you want here and the people is not gonna look at you. This is the real definition of freedom. For me, just go in a club. You can do whatever you want to do. Just always have like, don't disturb the next people that is behind you. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people see it as uh, the definition of freedom to be in a club and do whatever you want to, you know? But isn't it just a question to you, my friends? Do you think it's one-sided or not? Because maybe freedom is like to have uh, affordable living space, you know, travel where you want to. Uh, you can marry somebody that you want to, you know, same-sex marriage or whatever. Or like being as you, as you are, queer. Obviously in these spaces you can be also, you know. But is it, free, is it also freedom if you just have it like in four, four walls? Or is it like freedom if you have it like, you know, even outside of it? So, yeah, so, uh, you know, a lot of people see it as freedom because they can use drugs there and fuck around. But is that freedom? You know, is that what you want to do in public or what you want to do in life? That y your freedom is like so hard bound to this, this things, you know? Is free drug usage your freedom? It's like fucking around and nobody cares about you, your freedom. That's just my questions. I also see the space where you can, like, uh, you know, let your steam out and stuff. Yeah, cool. This freedom is cool. But maybe we should think about what freedom is and, like, a more broad perspective on freedom. I'm, I mean, all the sexual oppressed uh, kind of minorities and, like, uh, yeah, queer people. Yes, I do get it. That's their freedom is there because usually they need to hide and stuff and uh, but like for I think they're like just cis people I guess is it like freedom because this freedom I think you do have and they just take care of each other this is very nice to the people and I also don't know if uh, caring each other is in clubs like especially in Berkheim and stuff is like the case because yeah it's social yeah it's pretty nice, but there's also like uh, things uh, things happening there where people just like, you know, don't even react to it. And pretty edgy stuff as well. 
If you're interested what exactly happens, write it in the comments. Maybe we can discuss about it. But I think uh, uh, if I will talk about it, it's going to be like R-rated and stuff. And I don't want to happen. So I need to think about it, how I can talk about it. People in the club and just take care. Like, hey, you have maybe too much drug. You feel okay? Just some people asking to another people, are you okay? Everything is okay? You need something? Well, this is... This happens, obviously, yes. Water, drink a little water. This is impressive. Yeah. And we were in KitKat, in Vilde Renata, and almost all, the... all, all of them. What I recently noticed is there is more drugs. And that makes the environment a little more heavy. Because it's not the kind of drugs that when we start to clothing that the people just start dancing and you move it. They just look at like more, you know, like kind of angry or kind of heavy environment around. And I noticed that. To be honest, I don't know about that because uh, basically everybody is telling. I think there's more drugs. And if I ask like my predecessors, they won't say it more or less. Stay like it is, you know, it's just like your your POV kind of style of view for it. If I ask my sister, she's like she was like clubbing way before me. She was like, oh my god, it was like crazy. And if she's going out today, it's the same, you know, and uh, I, I entered the partying scene a bit later than her. Like, I think there was like 10 years apart or something. She was like partying to all this like, EDM clubs, uh, techno clubs way earlier than me. For her, nothing changed. And that's also for me kind of the beauty is that these spaces kind of don't change. The people come, they're circulating, but they are not changing. Uh, but then yeah the vibe of the party is not changing there's always be like this kind of magic in the air yes but the people are cycling it's just like uh, a kind of an uh, inception kind of uh, inception kind of uh, happening there you know it's like on the inception like a loop or something yeah so i don't know because like back in the days they used uh, the crazy drugs what he's talking about not gonna names uh, about it and they use it today you know and nothing pretty much changed let's be honest also it's the only city that i know in the world that you can take your drugs to taste in laboratories that pay it from the government this is crazy and the people don't don't understand this concept i also don't I never heard of it before i heard about like drug checking drug testing but Let's be honest, who does it? I mean, do I go like to a drug dealer and take it and then I go to the laboratory, he checks it and then, you know, it's too much, too much commitment to it, my opinion. But you should do it. It's like, they are not legal, but the government is going to tell you this is a good thing that you can put it in your body. This is not good that you put it in your body. It could be very different. I think you, the government doesn't say that's good, take it to your body, but yeah. Different from what I experienced in my country or in Russia. I usually find going to clubbing intimidating and kind of a dangerous thing. But in Berlin, it's more accessible. You can dance, you can do whatever you want. People start arriving at clubs at two at night. Mm -hmm. Very late, they go out of the club, like in the morning. These drugs everywhere. The, the amount of hard drugs that people can take it here and i come from mexico you know like we don't use too much drugs we just sell it put it in the states and around the world it's true this is the part of the thing of happening in mexico and that's the funny thing about the club everyone is friendly because everyone is in drug you know like yeah. you can make a lot of yeah this is also like pre-assumption yeah everybody is on drugs you know let's put this aside Let's say all tourists are on drugs, obviously, you know, but there is a lot of people that are not on drugs, that are just like enjoying to be there. I'm not going to deny that, uh, like, let's say like 60% is, you know, but this is like also like kind of an expat kind of view, you know, because there, there's a lot of like sporty ravers and like adult people that just going there just to be there. And also... There's people, like obviously, maybe you heard of it, that like in backhand, yeah, usually the, 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 the regulars, they just go uh, Saturday, Sunday morning. So this is also like a thing. If you go like in the morning or like in the midday or something, you also don't have to use that much drugs because you're basically in your normal sleeping cycle and you don't need like uppers and stuff. So there's like 
tricks or whatever that you can play around for less drug usage. But if you like have a, like limited perspective of you, you see like everybody is on drugs. I don't think that everybody is on drugs, and I really think that it's not even like a huge like a absolute majority. Maybe let's say sixty percent, maybe fifty fifty. You know, obviously the 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 heavy drug users are more. You see them more because they have like these eyes and whatever. But you know, there's also quite settled and chill people hanging around in clubs. A lot of new people in the clubs, but the techno thing is beautiful. It's an experience, really. I've never been in a place that you party and club like in Berlin. It's another story. Some months ago, we were in Spain, and I told Guillermo like. What is this? This is a disco, really? This is a club? Like, like I, I, I can't consider anymore partying <laughs> without techno and without being kinky. What do you mean by kinky? I mean, so I don't know. Watching. You need to dress up. Like, you can't go dress like this. There are some dress codes. Like, not in Spain, you need to go like very posh and with high heels and look pretty. Here, it's like, can I see some of your skin? Okay, you are allowing. <laughs> That's a silly example, but I don't know. Come on, just fuck in the clubs. There are people I didn't want in the to clubs, say you know? that. Like, sorry. I think they're still like kind of shocked that uh, you can fuck here in the clubs. Obviously, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting topic for them. But I don't know, man. You can get in the clubs here as you want. Yes, that's true. You don't have to posture up or like to dress up and stuff. Yes, it's true. But I always appreciate a good look. Still, you know. And dress and heels is still beautiful. And yeah, that's what I can say to it. And also, there are like women that uh, go like this uh, to party, you know. And I really don't like people dressing like shit. I don't like it. Yes, I'm snobbish for that and I don't like judge it or whatever, you know, like on site or whatever. But I, what I can say, I appreciate good looks. And good looks is there's a, there's a huge variety of good looks. Let's say it like this. But if somebody wears shit, I don't like it. I rather feel the complete butt naked guy than somebody who wears like shit. Oh, no. Maybe I don't care, man. I don't know. I, I don't see see as that, but I like people like thinking about what they're dressing. That's just what I can say. I don't judge any people, but if it's a good fit, I would say, man, you killed it. Woman, you killed it. <laughs> Girl, you slaying it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's getting, it's is... <laughs> and I don't don't think that uh, everybody has to show skin to just to get in a club. That's I, I I don't see it. People <laughs> fucking in the clubs, and there's people that go naked, you know. And there is areas specifically. There are parties for sharing love if you want to call it like that you know like there is specific yes. rooms that Dark the rooms. people are like masturbating or fucking or watching another people or bdsm the scenario bdsm here is like you want kinky things remember that time in the bus i had to try it when i first got here because i'd heard so much about it so i went to bergain which is not far from here bergain. and i did go to the Kit Kat club and this is where the Germans break out of their box. Mm -hmm. And it's no holds barred. Um, I was told I would never get past the doorman, but... This is also like a funny thing, you know? This here is an American who has like this prejudice of Germans being totally fixed in their box and is himself shocked about that people go out of the box in the club. But me, as like an uh, immigrant's child grown up in Germany, so basically like t mixed cultures, like, like a mixed cultural uprising. I don't know, man, there is nothing more in the box than an American, you know? They have like their square kind of thinking, which they think is pretty broad, maybe it is pretty broad. But they also like the limitations is hard. Also, when I'm talking about the, the, the prior video, 
about the US ravers and the European ravers. Well, what is the difference? There's some uh, some people or some like, I think he is American, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. In the US, they just like dra dress colorful and beautiful, not like in the Europeans, like depressed and whatever. But the fits here are not like depressed. Yeah, there's like this whole black thing going on that like is amplified by social media. Cool. But nobody is depressed and people also wearing colorful things. And I, if you want to, I can show you some videos of it, you know. you Always on the parades, on the Christopher Street days, there's always colorfulness here, yeah. So this is like uh, Americans just like stigmatizing or putting somebody in the box. And it's funny that he's talking about boxes. Yeah? You've heard the voice. <laughs> I just went to the doorman. I said, excuse me. And I pushed him to the side and walked on in. This was Bergheim and Kit Kat because I sound like I'm someone you should not argue with. Mm -hmm. it, it was wild. I mean, people having sex on the dance floor in the corners, drugs everywhere. It was not exactly my kind of scene. Also, you know, obviously I'm over 35 and for the most part. Boy, you're over 45. Not it's a very years. young scene for the most part not completely but for the most part we were in the bus you know like taking the 20 the 49 and there was a convention of latex in berlin oh yeah Do you know how interesting i think is the world to see kids a bunch of kids like 10 of them with a ball that they come out or they are gonna go to play and behind them four or five persons full dresses in latex with you know like high heels. Heel, high heels cover the face like and the kids are like the most normal because it's berlin because the kinkiness of berlin is the most normal thing there's a lot of uh, places that sell clothes for party for clothing that is one question to the audience what's your opinion on this because i have like a bit mixed feelings about it I'm not really sure what I, where I tend to, but what's your opinion about like this whole kinky fetishness coming out to broad daylight and like kids and stuff seeing it, you know? Because usually, you know, if we talk about like queerness, most from what I got, they're like not, not about like they're not doing it to show it to children so, and they do it for themselves, you know? But if it's like this hard exposure, What's your opinion about it? I'm pretty interested. If maybe maybe there is a video where I can react to it or we can talk about it in the podcast or something. Tell me your opinion if, if you got some. It's just one strike and they charge you 100 euros. I've been to a different, lot of different countries and a lot of clubs and, and then like the bouncers, for example, are like very friendly to you and you would expect that they will let you in and, and they just go in and, and here is totally different. Here you have to make a big line and it might be that the bouncer says, today you're not going in even though you may have already tickets or maybe you were going to get the tickets yeah, and stuff like that but uh, the berlin uh, club scene is mostly uh, i would say techno uh, based uh, so okay. whatever you club you go in berlin you will find techno music uh, okay. maybe high techno dark techno i've now been to the one of the main famous ones in berlin uh, i'm not gonna say the name but everybody knows it because it's crazy to get They're in crying. i mean even if you wait for two hours you're gonna get rejected uh, but I like as well that they, most of them, they don't have a uh, close time. They just say, okay, well, open end till 7, 8 a.m. in the morning, which when I was young, I used to do it a lot. And another thing that I found interesting is that um, some of the old factories or old places, they have converted them into clubs. Like I went to one the other day that was, it's actually on, on the underground. It was maybe an old factory or something, laboratory or something, and then they converted it into uh, club. Well, yeah, like... but the, the, uh, on this culture, uh, the techno scene or the techno club scene culture in Berlin is based on that. We reacted to it in the previous videos and I told, uh, told, told the story of it. So you might check out the previous videos, why this is the, the status quo here. Like no one judged you on the club. You can do whatever you want. In Bergen, in Bergen, I saw one guy that was in his knees. Uh, walking and just come to you and say like can i lick your shoes and say like mm, not today thank you maybe tomorrow you know like and the people is like oh yeah feel like that she can enjoy that you know and it, people is very polite uh, there are a lot of signs like no is no our consent she's sexy and just they ask and you say no and people go and 
not having phones, not having photographs of, of that, it's also yes. very cool because yeah. you are yeah. living the moment. You don't live for Instagram or for showing off and for yourself no evidence. and enjoying it. Yeah, and there no is one no is watching you. Of so. course, there is no evidence you that's freedom, freedom as well, of course. You can find party in Berlin, kinky party from Monday to Monday, 24 hours. You just need to knock the perfect door and... It's and happening. not the perfect people and the private ones and that's what I've been told. I used to go clubbing <laughs> that's what I heard. when I was younger and before COVID actually, because the whole climate of clubbing was different before COVID. Mm -hmm. The club is there, it looks the same, but it doesn't feel as open as it used to feel. The three aspects of it. So there's the techno thing, which is the most common ones. And then we have this 90s, 80s pop. Then we have this international mix club, such as more oriental, Turkish Arabic influenced clubs, also you know, apply to more LGBTQI clubbing scenes. So there are overlaps in between, which I really enjoy. So yeah. you don't really have to compartmentalize yourself into one group. Sometimes it overlaps and it helps you discover another aspect of the city life and clubbing life. I would say Where? perhaps Berghain and Kitkat are probably the most famous clubs in Berlin. Hmm. What would you say is special about them? It's, it's hard. Interesting what they're gonna say. Let's let's check it out. I, I mean, no. sound system in Berlin, amazing. The freedom, amazing. Everyone is bringing something. It's adding something to the party. So it's not like just viewers. Everyone is part of the party and giving something extra to the party. Otherwise, you are not in the vibe, and mostly they won't allow you in. For me, Berlin is more about like the sound system. I never heard like sound system like that. That techno just move you. That music move you. You don't need to move. The respect in these places is... We, we come from Spain or from Mexico that you are walking and someone just push you, you know, and they start like sometimes fights or something like that. No, no, no. Here is like you're working and someone making like just simple like this. Oh, so sorry, you know, like what's not my intention? It's like, yeah, dude, don't worry. It's okay. And it's more funny because you go like with t-shirt normally, you know, so you just have this contact human contact but that's not something special that is just like special for Berkheim and Kirke. very funny and the people are like very chill out something that is not happening normally i think that's basically in every edm kind of uh, rave cultural compartment you it's, it's like that basically only i think like mainstream hip-hop parties or whatever is like more about like beating each other up at the end of the, the night outside of the club so this kind of contact is skin to skin i remember the first time that we were in Berlin. She told me like, this is so cool. Everyone is gay here. So I can be myself and I don't have guys to come to me and tell me like, hey, how are you He's doing, you know? And she was like, I feel like I love this yeah. place. Yeah, I can just yeah. dance and be myself without. Yeah, that, that's, that's something that's true. Women or female flinters feel pretty safe in these spaces because usually they, they're not getting like harassed as much as in anything comparable to it because mm. like there is like a problem i guess it's, yeah it's problematic you know that women are get always like sexualized on the streets like getting a cat called and whatever and in these clubs it feels safer because most of the people not most of the people but like there's a huge there's a majority of gay people there so women feel like more undercover and like not like so sexualized but this also changed like over time since like techno and DDM culture is getting like more mainstream. There's also like more men, hetero men coming into the club and it's getting back to the back to the equilibrium that was before. The problematic equilibrium. Problem. So like I come from Spain. And yeah. I noticed <laughs> and we noticed like in all the But still it's like a thing that you don't do, basically. Like sexual harassment is something that you don't like see openly in these clubs. It happens, and I know it happens, a lot of stories and, and things like that, but like it, it's not happening that somebody just grabs a woman by the ass and stuff, you know, publicly, basically, you know. But it does happen, but because like there's like sex positive parties where you just walk and it's so packed and somebody just grabs your ass, you know. Still happens, you know. But it happens in a different way, in a different format. So basically, what they say is kind of true. The clubs normally is like that. Like the, the idea of go and be male, like, hey, hey, how are you? It's not happening here. It needs to be more organic 
I need to be more like, hey, how are you? Is this cool? Are you okay? Where are you from? You know, more easy. And not in the other clothing that is very, just go for it. And... But perhaps it might be a bit different in non-techno clubs here. We don't know though, so. <laughs> the main... They even admitted that there is a... Oh. That there is a limited perspective from what they're talking about. They just basically, I think they've been just like to Kit Kat and Berkheim and talking about it, you know. Dream clubbing culture is quite exclusive and techno focused. Yeah. <laughs> the most asked question I would say is, how do I dress to get in? Yeah. <laughs> so there is this, like the stigma around the Berlin clubbing culture that it's like you have to be a certain way to and then take certain things to really enjoy this very monotonous techno music. But what I found is actually the more you are like yourself and kind of confident and vibrant, and I, you always get in. But when I get in... Finally somebody talks like more facts and not like more show of posing stuff. I don't enjoy it too much in the techno clubs, I have to say. Like, I'm a dancer. I dance anything from like afro styles to like hip-hop or like bachata <laughs> or anything and uh, i don't find i can do that in like those techno clubs <laughs> obviously so what i do like to go do is go to like dj sets or go to a little bit like alternative for the for the berlin scene it's alternative yeah, yeah. <laughs> places where they play cumbia or hip-hop but hip hop clubs are really horrible in Berlin. Yeah, what? they're very. So there is like a gap, like for people, like who listen more like into her like musical taste, because uh, like really hip hop clubs are like the the biggest, biggest, biggest upset I think in Berlin. For in, in my eyes, there's like literally no club where let's say, like normal people can go. Yeah, and just enjoying themselves is always like pretty loaded with toxic masculinity vibes and trashiness. Very Talking trashy, crew. like <laughs> yeah. very macho, like sorry for the language, but very ass grabby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think consent has arrived in the yeah, yeah. hip hop yeah, club vibes. Mm -hmm. But in the techno scene, I have to say people are very respectful. Okay. That I have to say, they have a very like awareness teams and all of that stuff very good do you have any recommendations for clubs any favorite clubs my favorite one is Ritter it's uh it's the worst one don't go there uh it's not kinky but you can be kinky if you want they bring a lot of cool djs and not necessarily just techno can be everything there is this little bar that i also love in koizberg it's Born and gold. It's just a bar where there are like you enter the bar to see some tables and people smoking and drinking a beer. There is another room uh, with more people drinking. There is another room with a, a, a futbolito. Uh, yeah, like this play with the football uh -huh. thing. Yeah. And then <laughs> there is another room <laughs> the last one. that you go through and it's like a disco. And every day of the week, there is a different DJ, different music, and it's for free. And it's very cool, but let's keep it secret. <laughs> I like the parties from Lunacy that they made it in Wilder Renate. It's a kink party. So if you're into the kink vibes, House of Lunacy is a good, uh, or House of Red Doors or Lunacy, I think it's just like same party line. Um, yeah, this is like some good stuff, it's especially like, for entry level kinkiness. Like these parties that is you need to be costumes. So it's basically like costume parties, but a little, a little bit kink to it. So if you're like new to kinkiness and stuff, go to Lunacy or House of Red Doors or whatever the name of this like whole, uh, I think they have one Instagram page, so just check it out. And yeah, this is like your entry level kinkiness stuff. So they put a theme every party, they make it every two months. If you don't get like the right costume or you are not like providing the environment, they don't allow you to go inside. Either you have the ticket yeah. and inside is like different. It's like four or five different stages of music, different kind of music. So you can walk in all the place. It's yes. an old building. So imagine that you have like different ways and different rooms and the stairs and different 
floors, floors. but it's, it's a building and it's like it's and I, very cool yeah i enjoy it like yeah Ville renate is really cool i'm such a shame because i i'm local and i never been to renate till last week weekend we played a showcase there or oh, djs john fick Ethan, and his brother and noir uh, i don't know what his dj name is his name is or first time being Ville renate oh, such an amazing club really nice beautiful it's just like uh, such a for me it was like a, such a, a fresh air such a such a breath of fresh air to me to be there because i'm more used like to what they say like the more darker techno scene the bear kind which i really enjoy but yeah i've been there in wilde renate uh, it's a good recommendation for you if you're like more into like softer a softer entry you know if you're not like into like this hardcore drug abusive kind of scene what they be talking about with open consumption of this stuff for more the vanilla stuff let's say wilde renate is a good recommendation environment and i enjoy like the people over there and the music you can go to techno for more poppy or more like electronic 80s. or more housey or 80s i wouldn't recommend berghain <laughs> it's not worth the wait i mean you have to check the program whenever you go so for Oriental and a mixture of pop and everything, Schwutz is always the one I would go to with friends. It's in Neukölln. It's mm -hmm. huge. It's people of color friendly. It's LGBTQI friendly. It's yeah. everybody. Schwutz is also a nice space. Recommend. Friendly. Yeah. I used to like Trezor for techno. I like Heide Glühn when they have their house and hip hop nights. <laughs> Heide Glühn also strong recommendation. I kind of love this club and they do they do mixed stuff. That's also something interesting and something like not as ordinary and really like techno, techno, techno. So they play more house, more disco. They have the, some hip hop nights that are pretty good. Like uh, I think Daddy Fick was like, uh, I think two weeks ago in one of their hip hop nights and he was pretty much convinced. Because usually, as, as she said, you know, the hip-hop parties in Berlin are just like beyond uh, trashy, beyond shit. They have a really cool indoor area, which yeah. reminds me a little bit of an Alpreski place in winter. Yeah. So in winter it's also nice, but in summer it's even better because they have an outdoor area and they sometimes have concerts in combination. And that's super cool because it combines both. And um, very nice bouncers and uh, also very diverse group. So very cool. Word! Sex, drugs, Berlin club culture. As uh, my assumption was basically right, nobody's uh, a local. So they're just like expats that uh, I think like didn't discover the city pretty much till the fullest. So they're just talking of a limited space of view. I think I uh, against what means against in German, in English. Yeah, so I think I completed, uh, yeah, so I completed it with my local perspective on it. Um, yeah, so this is basically it. As I said, my assumption was right, they are all experts, so they basically have a very limited view of uh, things. And I think they're also like not really from this scene scene, core scene, so they're like more like... Uh, more outsiders let's say like this i won't say outsiders but yeah more like the hmm, let's say the consumers basically so yeah but uh, some interesting points of view some right things some things that i could add to and now that i'm thinking of they're talking like about parties house of lunacy there is one party that i can recommend to the person that asked me this before in the pre in the comment to max cooper what's my favorite club uh, and party what i can recommend i was like once or twice there uh it's a hip-hop flinter party but it's not that so here we have it homies this is a party that i can recommend it's basically a flinter LGB, LGBTQ plus uh, hip hop party, kind of mixed with uh, with not I wouldn't say techno but electronic music basically, and this is like a th something that I can really recommend to all the female flinter persons that are watching this. This is something that you need to check out. Obviously, really queer, really nice. I really like the vibes. Just been once there because I I think I maybe I'm not like the right audience for that but it was 
perfect really nice vibes also like a recommendation for people that are coming to berlin if you want to see something different something different than like this te techno kinky uh let's say like ordinary stuff so at this point uh we come to the end of this video i really enjoyed it to you know compliment the views of the expats that are talking about berlin because one thing that i love is talking about my home city so yeah see you in the next video um, if you have any comments and thoughts you want to share write it down in the comments subscribe like and share